it's October 2nd. Um, I just... <coughs> it's October 2nd. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So, yesterday... Um... I'm getting better at eating healthy. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it out loud. <laughs> something I'm still working on. You know, my, my weight was always something that I fluctuated with. So it's something that I'm always striving for better balance. I've just accepted that. <laughs> That's just part of my faith. <laughs> it's just, I love eating. I love eating. And so. I love food and I know I know yesterday it was a lot of like I think because I had a lot of screen time I miss that I was such a miss that I it was a long work day so when I was and then to top it all off I was so you know chismosa with my life <laughs> so anyways oh my gosh I'm going through these like faster I wanted a highlight <clears throat> so a couple things I could do it for minutes a few days ago I was really struggling with this idea of not finding my tribe my tribe and so through the process of looking at the videos so it's the videos where I'm with this new artist and in this last fire sign and in one of the videos I'm cry I'm triggered by him because um, I'm sharing with him one of my poems where I talk about my first poem, the first big poem that I wrote about my life and this awareness that I'm not from here nor from there I because I'm from everywhere. This realization, right? I moved around a lot. It always felt like I wasn't from there. I wasn't from there. Didn't matter what group I was in. There was always this feeling of like, I don't belong with you. Like, but then the realization, but I, if I don't own a place right then I own everything to a certain degree because wherever I go I make it my home I make it mine so I take care of it so it doesn't matter that I'm you know so that that way I'm all inclusive it was my thought process right and so he then in that video where I'm debriefing he's telling me about this poet who wrote the complete opposite of what I wrote. So anyways, it just reminded me that, you know, that I'm from everywhere. This experience with Project Survive has given me a little tribe, I've noticed, this past week, where it fulfilled that for me in, in the slightest. Like, it, it fulfilled it enough to where I'm like, okay, good, I don't, I don't need to go venture out anywhere <laughs> Like this, you know, after going through that process of being triggered and then finally presenting and the feeling, the rush that it felt, and then going back to the training, I was like, oh, this is good. I think this will suffice for now, right? So it made me think of a, a client who's struggling to find where they belong and still being triggered when they're not invited to places. So I sat with that for a little bit today and, and, and just realizing, right, that, you know, if we continue to be triggered, it's still something that is needing our attention to a certain degree, right? Still needing healing. And, the, and then, uh, then that, so then we stopped at, because our time was up, we stopped at the point of like, well, then how do we heal that, right? And then the only thing I can think of is that you just keep being exposed, you keep experiencing that and finding that sense of security and trust within yourself. Right? It's like that whole retraction, expansion, retraction, expansion process, right? This cycle of change, a cycle of involvement, whatever. So I was just thinking about that. And Abraham Hicks came out with another, well being came out with another video this morning about empaths and the, the increased responsibility. She, they used increased responsibility that an empath has because of the sensitivity to the energies around them. And I was thinking about all my clients who identify as empaths and or who don't identify in, as empaths, but I know that they're an empath because of the way they're responding. And usually these are the people who 
believe or have had some type of diagnosis that there's a borderline personality disorder. And I'm like, I don't see it that way. Even the way it's described is an empath for me, the way I see it. Oh my gosh, it's flashing. So I just was thinking about how incredibly sensitive they are to any shift in the wind. I was telling my client, I'm like, imagine a gazelle popping their head up <laughs> when there's a slight shift in the wind. And I'm just like, that's the, the type of sensitivity that I believe like empaths on that side of the spectrum have where they can detect like <laughs> so we started laughing about it because he identifies as an empath and he's like yeah that's how it feels like any slight shift in the energy it's it's like <laughs> like I feel it and so I was just thinking about that and and just the unawareness the lack of awareness that a lot of people might have and not realize that that's the power that they hold right and then it's like well how do you how do you how do you man okay part two <laughs> um so i know i said it was i'm not saying that every single person who has a diagnosis of borderline personality disorder is an empath i'm just saying that the ones that i've encountered so far who have dropped that like name dropped like i because i don't diagnose that at all but who have named dropped that that someone else has either mentioned it to them or, or there's a whiff of that uh, they've had that as a previous diagnosis and the more i hear their stories i'm just like you're just a nymph <laughs> but again i have to listen to the stories i have to hear the stories but like with everything, it's just a range of it on a spectrum. And again, this is just an effort to categorize and, and group people up into like, you know, what we're seeing and the, the challenges that they're having. But the people that I'm encountering, there's a, a clash within themselves based on how society sees them. And, and, and so the, the, there's trauma involved and or a whiff of trauma and or this perceived, and I think this is where I'm referencing the gazelle, where there may not have been a significant, like from what other, it, everything's based on perspective. That's the thing. It's like, who are you to tell someone what's traumatic for them? <laughs> Who are you to tell someone, right? What's dramatic for them? That that's I think where you know I'm trying to help my clients recognize it's not this. How do you perceive your life, right? Because if if whatever they did to you or whatever interaction occurred left you that imprint, that's what's important, right? That's what that's your starting point. That's that's where you need to kind of recognize like whether or not it fully fulfills the trauma diagnosis like, I don't care. <laughs> like it's subjective because it's it's how you experience it for yourself right so if someone rolled their eyes at you and you took that as a complete offense that's how sensitive you are to that experience you know what i mean and and in the way that i'm understanding People who identify as empaths right these highly sensitive abilities it, it's just it makes sense for me it makes sense so one of the things that I've noticed is a, a, a trend is this retreating uh, need the need for retreat the need for isolation the need to get away from the crowd right and then but they struggle with that why because society says oh we're social beings blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> which yes there's truth to that you know and, and then society says oh well you need to be you need to have family you need to always be around with other people you need to be social right you need to know how to interact with people yeah to a certain extreme to a certain degree and that's what i was trying to tell some of my clients i'm like there's a reason why there's jobs where it's more of like an individual work, like where you're not socializing with other people, right? Like, you know, 
librarians is a good middle ground where it's like silent right it's the library is supposed to be quiet and and you interact with like one person at a time maybe right depending on how busy the library is but for the most part like it's not a a coffee shop right and it's not a cubicle type of job where you're just by yourself there's a range of of you know <laughs> positions for people depending on their needs and so why does that not why can't we transfer that into just day-to-day -day life right like my sister being on my case why aren't you being more social you need to get out there and, and I'm like no no I don't <laughs> I'm social enough in my week and that was what I was reflecting on too in terms of just how I came back to being able to do therapy the only reason why is because I'm, I'm not being pulled in other directions after I'm done with work because that's what I noticed that would burn me out a lot when I would do therapy is that after I would do therapy, I'd have to come home. I'd have to deal with my, with my ex. Not that I had to deal with him. Sometimes it was a breath of fresh air, right? Um, but we always had like, we always lived with someone or, or we were involved in all these other activities. And so it would just continuously like drain my energy. And I didn't, I wasn't better balanced then. And so I would feel depleted. And so a lot of my clients that are just like, I just want to go out into the woods with myself. And they think that's crazy. I'm like, no, <laughs> like that's great. Like if that's what you're needing, go and do it. Like that's your inner call, your inner being trying to let you know you need to be on your own. You need to like remove yourself from all this overstimulation that's occurring into like until you can stay grounded and that was the, what this video the well-being video was talking about the importance of grounding yourself on your own first for empaths right those who identify as empaths are highly sensitive people the importance of being able to do that listening to yourself first right if you have this inner calling inner desire to do that there's a reason for it give yourself permission to do that and, and if you're not, you know, going to hurt yourself, you're actually going to find peace. You're actually going to find peace when you separate yourself from people. Why? Because I know what nature feels like and I know what, it like, what it's like to be on your own. It feels freaking amazing. <laughs> do what you need to do, right? To figure out who you are, what, what triggers you, what, what grounds you before you go out into the, to, you know, in communion, again, in community right? The more you can recognize, be in tuned with the slight shifts of the air, <laughs> the force, right? The wind, the slight shift within the energy, the more aware you are of that, the more you can redirect yourself back. So what does that mean? Because, because then I'm thinking about some of my clients, very empathic, but there's this like, I want to help society, right? Like, like I, I feel for my hurting friend, right? There's a reason why it's so impactful for, for an individual who's an empath that the, the bleeding through the energy experience for that other person. So it's almost like they need to, instead of, and here's the, I think the, the, the challenge with a lot of people who don't realize that it's, it's not, for you to keep diving in with the other person your sensitivity is such that you have to you you almost have to be more protective of you just because you're more protective of you doesn't mean that you don't care about the other person you know it that's not what that means it's more of this awareness of being able to separate this is my experience versus your experience and yes are we in this together in terms of like the solidarity like I, I will help you, but to the degree of which I can. I'm not going to drown myself with you, right? It's it's like it's that concept of of your you know your boat is ship sinking, 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 right? And and you have someone who's drowning. If you lad if they latch onto you and you're not on steady like holding onto that door from Titanic. <laughs> Right? Te van a hundir, right? You're going to drown with them if you are not grounded. And and so so it, it makes 
so how an individual navigates that to each their own right but it just made me think about um just my clients and and my friends who identify as empaths and and even thinking about my friend who's mia sometimes right she's very empathic and there's a reason why she's mia there's a reason now i understand it better why she doesn't have social media she she she's cut off she's just so focused on her family because that's enough for her like in terms of how much like uh let's say say the impact of interaction like that could just consumes her whole life she, she has no no time for other people and that's fine it used to bother it used to i remember at one point it didn't bother me it made me worried more of like um you know what what's happening to her but now that i'm saying it out loud i'm like oh duh that's why and i think i always knew that and i think that's why i always had a relationship with her whereas other people who were friends with her in the beginning kind of dropped off afterwards because they took it very personal they took it personal um and so again it just speaks to the triggers that they have in terms of attachments in terms of feeling belonging right and so it just reminded me of that it reminded me of of the sense of belonging and how how over time right when you when you understand you and heal you it's it's the triggering is less so what does that mean that means i can then be more available to other people because I'll I'll be so aware of what shifts within me that I am learning my boundaries, right? And saying, I think this is as much as I can go today, right? I don't have to party every weekend to, to have a life. <laughs> I don't have to have bare children, right? Or have a family that I'm constantly attending to, to have a life, right? I mean, for some, that's great. For some who party and that's their thing, great. It's not for me. It's not for me. I, I need enough, right? And and I think that was what was being triggered a couple of days ago is this awareness of like, you know, I, I'm wanting to partake in something, right? And, and feel like I belong to something. And this cause and, and being able to go present um, in person is something. And it's enough to what I'm needing. And, and I'm, I, I'm capping it there. <laughs> Capping it there. <laughs> that, that's that's enough. That's enough for me. That's enough, right? Um, yeah. So, just want to speak to that a bit, and I'll include the links for the well-being, um, for the well-being video that uh, came out today. All that, if it's helpful. Hey you, my name is Yubi and I use she they pronouns and you've just finished watching a clip from my video diary entries where I'm documenting my healing journey as I learn how to navigate my spiritual awakening. I have learned that this experience and process is unique to each and every one of us in whatever way we are embracing living our truth. This just happens to be my journey. And despite me having a graduate degree and a license in clinical social work, this by no means is intended to replace any type of formal mental health advice. This is just me on a personal level, um, shedding light on the truth that I am learning and discovering for myself as these experiences unfold and really inviting you along for the ride. Um, please know that there is a time gap between when these videos post and my real timeline. And also that these clips build upon each other similar to chapters in a book. So if you find yourself lost or confused, feel free to click on the playlist section or the link below um, where you can jump around, check out the other chapters and or catch up. Um, also, please know that um, you're more than welcome to check out my website, www.youbecominghealed.com, where I've gathered all of this information, my background, experience, um, and education to create online self-paced courses to help you on your healing journey wherever you are. You're also more than welcome to check out my other YouTube channel, at You Becoming Healed, where I've entertained a podcast, including clips from these courses so that I can make this content accessible to more and more people.
um, please click like, subscribe, and share this content so again it reaches more people with the hopes that other people will resonate and connect with the healing journey and the stories shared so that they don't feel alone in their own process. I thank you in advance, I'm grateful to you, and um, I wish you well.